Hello, I'm Mario Taniguzzi with Canada's podcast, Taking Care of Business Today, with Franco Terrazzano, who is Federal Director of the Canadian Taxpayers Federation. Thank you, Franco, uh, for joining us today. Hey, thanks for having me on. Well, April 1st is coming up pretty soon. We all know it's April Fool's Day, but the joke isn't on Canadian taxpayers, isn't it? Well, on April 1, very same day, the carbon tax going up, alcohol taxes going up, and MP pay also going up. So get this, folks. On the very same day that they take more money out of your wallet, they're going to be stuffing more money into their own. Okay, let's talk about each individual thing. Uh, let's talk first about the carbon tax. Tell us what's happening with the carbon tax on April 1st. Well, Trudeau is planning to crank it up one more time, right? As he's planning to do every single year. So after April 1, the carbon tax will cost 17 cents a liter of gasoline, 21 cents per liter of diesel, and 15 cents per cubic meter of natural gas. So in effect, the carbon tax not only makes your life more expensive, it makes the necessities of life more expensive. It makes it more expensive for you to fuel up your car, to take the kids to school. The carbon tax makes it more expensive for you to heat your home. And the carbon tax also makes it more expensive for you to buy food because the carbon tax, it, it taxes the farmers who grow the food. It taxes the truckers who deliver the food. So it taxes you when you buy the food. Now you probably hear the government spin coming out of Ottawa saying, oh, well, the rebates, the rebates, the rebates, but don't buy the spin folks because the government's own nonpartisan independent budget watchdog, the parliamentary budget officer shows that the carbon tax will cost the average family in Alberta about $900 a year more than what they get back in rebates. Now, it's so obvious to Canadians living outside of Ottawa how the carbon tax is costing them more, right? The government imposes the carbon tax. It charges its sales tax on top of the carbon tax. And the government is also spending hundreds of millions of dollars to hire the bureaucrats to administer the carbon tax. So the carbon tax is a very expensive, very costly tax. And to make matters worse, it looks like it's going up again April 1. So, um, you know, let's talk a little bit about that carbon tax and the uh, the the ripple effect that you obviously talk about, you know, the the rising costs of consumers. But uh, let's talk a little bit about the businesses out there and how they're going to be impacted. Obviously, their costs are going up. Uh, you know, uh, people uh, will be uh, really weary and, and weary and leery of uh, spending money, uh, right? So, so their sales are going to be down. And on top of all that, from what I hear from the uh, Canadian Federation of Independent Business, a lot of these small businesses are waiting for rebates that they haven't seen back yet. Well, I'm glad you brought that up because one of the reasons that the carbon tax is so damaging is because of its ripple effect throughout the entire Canadian economy. Like number one, Canada is a cold place. So any business that's <laughs> using natural gas to stay warm, I mean, there is an obvious added cost. But yeah. number two, Canada is a very big place, right? So if you have a trucking or shipping business, Obviously, you're paying those costs because of the carbon tax on diesel, for example. But also, if you're just a business who needs to get inputs from suppliers, well, some of those costs are going to be added on to you as well. Yeah. Right. But another aspect here is that the vast majority of countries don't have a national carbon tax like Canada does. I mean, just look south of the border. The, the United yeah. States doesn't have a national carbon tax. I mean, even under a democratic administration they don't have a national carbon tax. So then there's obvious competitiveness issues facing Canadian businesses that make the carbon tax so damaging to the Canadian economy. Yeah. Talk a little bit about the, the alcohol tax. What's that going to do and what's the impact <laughs> going to be there? Well, I know this April 1 tax and pay raise could drive you to drink, uh, but more bad news, right? Because the government's going to be raising taxes on alcohol as well. So, Initially, the federal government said, uh, said it was going to raise the alcohol tax by 4.7%. Now the federal government says it's going to raise its alcohol taxes by 2%. But make no mistake about it, alcohol taxes from the federal government are still going up. Uh, they're still going to cost taxpayers the tax increase alone about $40 million a year. But there's two other things that we have to understand. 
Number one is just the extent to which alcohol is already taxed in Canada. When you add up the provincial taxes, the federal taxes, all those types of markups, uh, you're looking about more than half of what you pay for the beer, the wine, or the harder stuff. More than half of that is tax already. Yeah. But the second thing is that this federal government in 2017 brought in an automatic tax escalator, which means that the federal excise tax goes up every single year without a single vote in the House of Commons, right? So that is fundamentally undemocratic. Now, I don't think Canadians should pay any higher taxes, but if there are MPs that think that you should pay higher taxes, they should at least have the spine to vote on the tax increase. But that's not what's happening in Ottawa with their alcohol taxes. Yeah. So what? what's the, what's the road ahead, I guess, uh, for Canadians? Because, uh, you know, it's obvious that, uh, the government has uh, dug in and uh, they're not changing, uh, if, even though uh, I think almost every premier, except maybe one or two, are against this carbon tax. Uh, you know, what are Canadians to do? Well, first, let me just say uh, the fight against the carbon tax is far from over. Far from it. Right. So there's eight provinces that have the federal government directly applying its carbon tax, like Alberta, for example. Seven of the eight premiers in those provinces, including the lone liberal premier in Newfoundland and Labrador, have spoken out against the upcoming carbon tax increase. And not only that, seven in 10 Canadians also oppose the carbon tax increase. So look, the federal government is feeling a ton of pressure right now. So let's keep the pressure up because this fight is far from over. But the second thing, which uh, it just drives me bonkers, is that while Canadians are going to be facing higher prices, members of parliament are going to be giving themselves higher pay. Yeah. And that pay raise, it, it, you know, it's not announced yet, but the estimated pay raise will be between $8,100 extra for a backbencher all the way up to an extra $16,200 for Trudeau. So after the April 1 pay raise, uh, a backbench member of parliament, their salary will go up to around $202,000 a minister's salary like Freeland or Guibault will be making just shy of $300,000. And after the raise, Trudeau's annual salary will be around $405,000. Uh, you know where your taxpayer's money is going. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, um, Franco, what, um, uh, you know, if you guys have got anything going on in terms of petitions or anything like that, uh, yeah, know that you guys in the past have done a lot of that type of stuff. Oh, absolutely. Just head over to taxpayer.com. We have a ton of petitions. Scrap the carbon tax, stop the alcohol tax hikes, uh, stop the MP pay raises. They're all there. We um, And one of the things that if you sign the petition, you can get our emails for free on those issues. And we let you know when you have a great opportunity to take action and push the government to stop wasting your money and to stop raising taxes. For example, tomorrow, there is going to be a big vote in the House of Commons. They will vote on a non-binding motion to stop the April 1 carbon tax increase. Well, if you've signed up uh, on our carbon tax petitions, we'll give you an email uh, directing you to send an email to your member of parliament, for example, to vote to stop the carbon tax hike. So that's just some of the ways that we help actual like Canadians put pressure on their politicians and hold them accountable. But also too, like uh, on taxpayer.com, we've got the newsroom there where we're continually showing examples that we dig up on the government just wasting your money like crazy. All right, super. Thanks, uh, Franco, for joining us today. Hey, thanks for having me on. All right, that was Franco Terrazzano, who is federal director of the Canadian Taxpayers Federation. I'm Mario Taniguzzi, Managing Editor of Canada's Podcast, Taking Care of Business. Thanks for joining us today.